I survived 100 days in hardcore Minecraft while only using the rarest items in the game. The goal is simple, collect every single rare item in Minecraft while not dying. There's only one rule, the only items I can use or have in my inventory have to be rare or necessary to obtain the rare item. Sit back, relax, and experience this 100 day journey with me. On day one, I spawned into the world with my classic clown outfit and had to decide which rare item I had to get first. Obviously, diamonds come to mind when you think of rare items in Minecraft, but I had a little bit of a different idea. The rarest ore to actually mine in Minecraft is emerald ore. Emerald ore is now about 30 times more rare than diamond due to it spawning in only two block veins, meaning that players have to be quite meticulous when mining. Thankfully, emeralds can also be found in loot as well as villages. Now you know I always have to go the easy way, so I went to the nearest village and what do you know, we actually got some emeralds in the first village we found. They were inside this villager's house and I had to steal them. Sorry villager. From days 2 to 5, it was a hunt on trying to find echo shards. Echo shards are a new item added to the game with the recent update. Echo shards can only be found in ancient cities as well as the deep dark biomes. Echo shards can be used to build recovery compasses which help you find where you died and get your loot when you die. The reason echo shards are so rare is because the ancient city itself is almost impossible to find and once you go there the chests only have a 29.8% chance rate. It took about 3 days to actually find the ancient city, but once I found it, it was pretty easy to find the echo shards. On the first chest we opened, we found 3 echo shards as well as a diamond hoe. Now a diamond hoe is actually a rare item so I can keep it. The one thing I was super worried about was the warden. One hit from him and it was GG's. On the second chest, I found another echo shard as well as a golden apple and this rare potion. Both of these items are also rare items. The golden apple actually being one of the rarest and most sought after food items. It restores 4 points of hunger and 9.6 saturation. It also gives you a bunch of buffs. The chance of getting it is between 1.4% and 6.5%. From day 6 to 10, it was a hunt trying to find the heart of the sea. The heart of the sea is a item that is found in Minecraft that is used to craft a conduit, which provides underwater breathing and and visibility. To find the heart of the sea, you gotta find a buried treasure chest. You can find a buried treasure chest by using a treasure map. I found one with this sunken ship, found the treasure map, and started heading to the heart of the sea. After following the red X on the map, I dug down, found the buried treasure chest, and there was the heart of the sea inside. From days 11 to 20, it was a grind trying to get the nether star. The nether star is a rare item obtained by defeating the wither. The first thing I had to do was go into the nether and find some wither skeletons. Wither skeletons are located in the nether fortress and they have a small chance of dropping wither skeleton skulls. I need three of these to create the wither. I also need soul sand which can be found in the nether as well. Found some wither skeleton and it was a grind. I kid you not took hours to find these skulls. After finding the skulls, I had to figure out a way to actually beat the wither. The wither is one of the most powerful bosses in the game. And if you can't tell, I don't really have anything. I did some research and I found out the easiest way to beat the wither is by going into the end and building him under bedrock. Once you build the wither under bedrock, he can't actually move and it gives you a chance to easily kill him. I now had to go and create a end portal. You guys know the process of doing that, so I'll skip to the details. I built the ender portal, we went inside the end, and now the real challenge began because I had to create the wither under bedrock. I placed the soul sand, placed the wither skeletons, and now it was time to defeat the wither. As you guys can see, it was a pretty easy battle. The wither actually can't really move because it's under bedrock. 
After collecting the nether star, it was now time to actually use it by creating a beacon. A beacon can be created by using a nether star and three obsidian blocks. But before we could do that, there was one thing I had to do. I had to get the elytra. From days 31 to 40, that was my job. The elytra is found in end ships on the outer end islands. To reach the end ships, you need to defeat the ender dragon and access the end gateway portal. Thankfully, I defeated the ender dragon and can now access the end gateway portal. There's a pretty rare item when going into this portal. You can find these chorus fruit that are unique to this island and actually have a 50% chance of dropping. I had to explore the end outer islands until I found the end city. I found this huge ship that actually has a chance of having the elytra in it. You walk down these stairs and you find this room with the elytra on the wall. There is this mob or this defense system that kind of attacks you once you try going at it. It was kind of a challenge just trying to defeat it. I used my shield, defeated it, and got the elytra. If you don't already know, the elytra is a rare and highly sought after item that allows players to glide through the air. Just look at me, I can fly. From days 41 to 50, it was my goal to build that beacon. If you don't remember, I had got that nether star by defeating the wither, and now I had to collect the obsidian. Of course, to obtain obsidian, you need a diamond pickaxe, and then of course, you put lava on water and mine away the obsidian. After collecting the obsidian, I went to the highest mountain I could find and built the beacon. The beacon requires the nether star, some glass, and three obsidian. In Minecraft, a beacon is a valuable block that provides various gameplay utilities. However, it requires a pyramid made of iron, emerald, netherite, or a combination of these blocks to be activated. I took the easy road out and I collected some iron and built the pyramid. The pyramid can be 3x3, 5x5, or 7x7. Once activated, the beacon provides a unique effect to nearby players. The primary use of a beacon is to enhance the player's abilities and make tasks like mining, building, and fighting more efficient. That's why it takes so long to build and includes so many rare items in making it. From days 51 to 60, I found this random hut that had a chest in it and I got some diamonds. Now the main mission during these days is to find a woodland mansion and kill a evoker to obtain the totem of undying, which grants players a second chance at life by preventing death and providing healing upon taking fatal damage. Now the reason this item is so rare is because the woodland mansions are incredibly hard to find and actually killing a evoker is very difficult. As you guys can see, I had to take a golden apple just to keep enough hearts that I don't die when trying to kill it. It was a close call, but I got that totem of undying and left that mansion. As you guys can see, we only have rare items in our inventory, all diamond armor, everything's rare, we're set up. From day 61 to 75, I headed to the ocean to try and obtain a trident. A trident is dropped by drowned mobs who have a chance of spawning when zombies drown in water. The trident is a powerful ranged weapon and can be enchanted with unique abilities. I had to get this weapon, I headed to the sea, and it honestly took a while trying to find these drowned mobs. There's only a 6% chance of the drowned mobs actually leaving a trident. I have to find some dripstone caves. Basically, drowns only spawn at light level of zero in all ocean biomes. I luckily found a couple and it was a battle trying to find the trident. Once I found a drowned mob holding a trident, it continuously attacked me. So much so that I had to use the totem of undying. I hid behind some sand and finally got a chance to kill the drowned mob. That might have been the hardest battle I've done so far. I quickly ran away with a couple hearts left. So far, we've collected most of the rare items in Minecraft. During the last 25 days, I kid you not, it was a long process of trying to find this stupid snow block. If you don't know, there's this really rare variety of a snow block that has dirt but snow on top of it. It's really weird. Anyways, after the 25 days, this is all I could find with snow on it. It'll do, right? Come on, guys. I still completed the 100 days, right? This will pass. Subscribe for a cookie.